heck? Is there like a crime scene here or something? Huh? Continuous rain, just like the weather prediction said, huh? Non-stop. I actually did get the ribbon cable in late last night. So essentially I could get started on trying to attempt to repair that gimbal anyways. And I, just by looking at the ribbon just from the outside the package, I didn't open up the actual seal. You can just kind of tell how, I guess, flimsy it could be, like how easy it could be to break. It's just too bad they didn't invent something a little bit more sturdy, huh? It was a bad timing for today too to even attempt it because actually I'm supposed to talk to a lawyer today. Just about that situation you guys know where that guy stole my drone footage and all that. So we'll see how that goes. One of the cool things I saw today relates to the Skydio 2 drone. This one looks like they have some kind of, I guess, a docking station or a base. It looks kind of cool. First I was looking at this like, is it real? It kind of looks like the drone is basically stored inside this dock and essentially it comes out and it's supposed to, I guess, fly autonomously and capture the mission because it basically recharges itself in there. It's like something straight out of a movie, huh? It says here, Skydial 2 Dock is a self-contained, weatherproof charging base station for Skydial 2 that enables truly persistent operations for enterprise applications. However, nothing has come close to delivering on these promises. Existing solutions are massively complex, expensive, and impractical. And beyond all of this, if you want persistent operations that don't require a pilot in the loop, you need a drone that's smart enough to fly itself. The Skydial 2 dock brings together the most advanced autonomous drone in the world with a compact, lightweight, and accessible dock station. It fits on a carry-on suitcase, can be set up in minutes, and uses the proven Skydial autonomy engine to intelligently accomplish complex tasks. I just know it seems like these guys have the cool factor down in terms of their drone product and all that. What this actually reminds me of are those stories where there apparently were those home security systems where it could launch like a little small drone around your own property, kind of like a home surveillance camera, I guess you could say. But then the issue with that, I would wonder is as fantastic as that is, how about the regulations and stuff? For example, one of the issues could be, hey, you fly up in your own property, but what if this guy says, oh, that thing is too close to me now because they're walking in the sidewalk and maybe they're just a few meters away, so would that make it illegal? So it comes down more to things like regulations and all. But either way, it looks kind of cool to me. I guess I can imagine it for like construction sites, for example. It comes out, flies, does like a whole pan and so forth, goes back in, maybe like four hours later, it'll automatically come out and do the same thing. That would be kind of neat. And with that thought of you basically need to find ways to recharge your drone if you want to do long flight operations, how about this? It says the plan to boost drone batteries with a teensy jet engine. A Florida aviation startup wants to supplement electric power with its watermelon-sized micro-turbine. For all the hype swirling around electric aviation, the current state of battery technology and electric powertrains remains a limiting factor for all the drones, air taxis, cargo haulers, and flying cars hoping to take off. Unhappy with that cap, the range, power, and speed of these aircraft, one Florida startup is taking a different tack. Rather than relying on batteries and rotors, UAV turbines are developing a tiny jet engine. It says they tested its first micro-turbine-based propulsion system called the Monarch 5 in a compact fixed-wing drone weighing about 500 pounds with a 22-foot wingspan. This quiet jet engine can power propellers, generate electricity for electric motors, or even produce its own thrust. And while pocket-sized jet engines have been boosting radio-controlled model airplanes for decades, the company calls the Monarch 5 the first commercial-grade micro-turbine. Okay, that's a little too heavy for someone to fly it recreationally, obviously. And it says they spent their early years upgrading their small turbine tech for more demanding work, sweating heat management, fuel burn efficiency, and honing pressure ratios. And it says, quote, modelers don't need them to fly that long, so getting 20 hours from a single engine is more than a year's worth of flying. Would people actually embrace something like this though? Just with all that stuff about things like climate change and all that. So like I assume this thing burns fuel, correct? Like partially anyways, kind of like a hybrid, fuel and electric. I still remember that other drone, it's called the Impossible Drone or something like that, where instead of building a drone and then trying to build, I guess, a battery around it, they basically built the battery first and then build all the drone mechanics around that design. Whatever happened to all those things like those graphene batteries and stuff like that? Is that what it's called? Or how about the hydrogen stuff? Where's all that? Okay, gonna 
let's see how this meeting goes. Guess there's no flying today again, huh? I guess it's the archive. Alright, see you guys later.